uh, I was told by the rural development uh, minister then uh, um, that Chakwa is being transferred to my department, my my uh, under my under my purview, and I was happy. I was honoured to be given the mandate to look after Orang Asli. It still is, right? Currently, no, no, no. no it's there. back after me. It was back to okay. um, 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 rural development ministry. Um, in a way, yes, you know, rural development because you know there are roads need to be built and infrastructure and all that. Yes, you know, but the the other aspect of the Orang Asli community has been neglected. So I, I wanted to do something different for them, you know. Um, so uh, there were certain areas that I was looking at, especially housing, uh, housing, water, electricity, and recognition of their religion. Now let's talk about water and electricity first. Now when I when Jakwa came to me and when I read their 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 reports and you know their plans and all that. There, there are plans, you know, projects to Padu Jalan Raya to connect all the Orangsley Kampongs and all that. Every budget has been allocated. Every uh, certain budget is allocated for this program. By the time they connect all the Kampong Orangsley, it's going to take years. Number one. And then there's also allocation for electricity and water. By the time they supply electricity and water to the Orangsley, when I calculated, in my calculation, if my memory serves me right. In the next 20, 30 years, they will not get, not all villages will get their electricity and water. And I, when I, I made field visits to Orangasli Kampong, after hearing that a human rights lawyer and a Hindraf leader became the minister in charge of Orangasli, many of them communicated with me, wanting me to visit their Kampongs. And I visited. To my shock, when I visited, there were... You know, there were uh, Tai Chi being played by the Jakwa officers who didn't want me to see the water plant. I don't want to mention name, but he was a cabinet minister for a long time. And uh, apparently he fixed the water treatment, uh, you know, um, uh, the uh, plant there. And uh, apparently the, the generator worked for, <laughs> for probably uh, two days. And then after that, he stopped. And when I checked it, so about five million spent just for two days. And ever since it stopped and they do not have clean water again. Similarly with electricity. And so I thought this was a major problem. Electricity was, and water was a major problem. Let, let's talk about housing in a while. Major problem. So when I calculated, looking at the budget, by the time they get their water and electricity, it will be another, probably another 30 years. It's not going to happen. I say, look, this, this is not practical at all. You know, we can't go on like this. Okay, we have to start thinking different. So I started engaging, uh, you know, you know, some 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 NGOs because NGOs also approach me because they they know my background. So they approach me and they have many innovative programs, many innovative uh, gadgets. What a, um, you know, um, this guy by the name of Robbers, you know, he, he he uses a bicycle pump and 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 a filter, which is he says it, it costs about hundred fifty ringgit. You know, and we you supply one household, and they can get clean water immediately. You understand? So I I that that's one, and then there are other ways of getting water. You know, cleaner water. You know, uh, other methods, and then electricity, for example. See, one of the reasons because the, the, the forests are all it gets dark at six o'clock. It gets dark, so children don't study. You know, um, so. I, I found even people came with some mechanisms, you know, solar energy power, where it can the houses can be uh, with two um, uh, fluorescent lamps. Okay, uh, it, it the house will be bright for easily five six hours, which is sufficient if yeah. they put it on at six o'clock. By they'll have light until midnight. Children can study. They can still do work. You know, and then even even street lights. You know, solar solar powered street lights are a bit expensive. Maybe about twenty thousand. But the house um, uh, uh, fluorescent lights will cost about two to three hundred ringgit. That's all. So I told the Jaguar, I called the Jaguar officer. I said, look, look, let that take place. But I want a particular budget allocated. Let's start a program. You know, uh, um, a program where we can supply this. Uh, innovative lighting system and water system to the houses so that within the next two years, before the end of the Pakatan Harapan government, I, 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 I worked out many hours with them, plan after plan after plan, many hours with them. And finally, we, 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 we came, okay, fine. Within the next, at the end of Pakatan Harapan's term, okay, 
2023 or whatever, 2022. 2022. All Orangasli kampongs will be lighted up and all Orangasli kampongs will have clean water. Okay? And I said, you take out budget. So I spoke to the JPM and I said, certain budget has to be allocated per annum. And, you know, believe me, I was given tough time by the Jakwa officers who just simply do not want these things to happen. I was surprised in the beginning. But these are the truths that need to be told, I think. Because I think they are getting kickbacks somewhere else from the, you know, contractors or whatever. They do not want this to happen. All kind of blocks were put. And despite me, you know, <laughs> putting so much of pressure on them, they come up with all sort of excuses. They say, oh, we have to do parole hand, this, this. I said, do it, you know, do it. I called the JPM officers for a meeting. They said, yeah, can be done. Or uh, else, uh, officers work, work on it. They never got it moving. Now, uh, I, I, 